Okay, so let's go ahead and do the warm up problem. You should have added four on both sides. Twelve plus four is sixteen. That's step one: is to make sure that this is by itself. There is nothing outside of the parentheses and the squared. Now we're going to go ahead and square root both sides. This is a mistake that I saw a lot of people make on the quiz. They only square rooted this side and canceled it out, but they did not do the other side. They just kept it as 16. So what is the square root of 16? Four. What else? And negative four. It's four and it's negative four. And now what do I do to both sides? Yep, Wait, subtract two. Because four times four is 16 and negative four times negative four is also 16. That's why there's two answers. Good question. So now my answer is four minus two is two and negative four minus two is negative six. So these are my two answers. Now, how would I check to make sure these are right? You could plug it in. So guys, if you wanted to, you could plug this in. If I plug in a negative six right here, what's negative six plus two? And what's negative four times negative four? Minus four is 12, so that worked. Let's plug in a two this time. What's two plus two? Four squared is 16, minus four is 12. So both of those answers, when you plug it in, it makes sense. Okay, so that's the warm up. Let's go ahead and take some notes. Today, we're learning about the discriminant. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about the discriminant. This is the formula for the discriminant. And before you do this formula, you need to make sure that you have a quadratic equation written in this format. It has to go in this order, okay? Now, before we do any examples, let's talk about what the discriminant means. Once you plug in numbers into this formula, if you get a positive answer, your discriminant is positive, that means you're gonna have two real solutions. Do you guys remember another word for solution? X-intercepts, yeah. So an example would be something that has two x-intercepts is a picture like this. It crosses the x-axis two times. Can you try to draw another example? Try it on your paper. Here's another example. It crosses two times. So these are examples of graphs that have two real solutions. So if your graph looks like this or like this or any variation of it where it crosses two times, the x-axis twice, that means your discriminant was positive. Okay, now if you plug numbers into the formula and you get zero, the discriminant is zero, that means you only have one real solution, meaning you only have one x-intercept. So an example might be like this where it just touches the x-intercept one time. I'm sorry, it touches the x-axis one time. If you see a graph that looks like this, that means the discriminant must have been zero because you only have one solution, one x-intercept. Okay, finally, if you have a negative discriminant, so if you plug it into the formula up here and you get a negative answer, that means you'll have two imaginary solutions. Which means when you graph it, it won't touch the x-axis at all. It might look something like this. It doesn't touch the x-axis. You don't have any real solutions. You don't have any real x-intercepts. Okay? All right, so that's what the discriminant will tell you about your graph. Okay. All right, so let's look at an example. I'm going to choose one off of your page. Okay, so this is number 10.
Okay, now the first question is, is this in standard form? Standard form looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Is that in standard form? No, so we need to put it in standard form before we start. That means this needs to go on the other side. So it will become a positive x squared minus 3x. This also needs to go to the other side. It becomes a minus 40. Okay, now it's in standard form. Okay, so the formula for the discriminant is right here. So let's label A, B, and C. This is A, this is B, this is C. That means A is one, B is negative three, your C value is negative 40. I'm talking about the coefficients. Okay, so we're gonna plug those numbers into the formula. So this is negative three for B, the A value is one, and the C value is negative 40. Okay, so negative three squared, what is that? Nine, negative three times negative three is nine. Minus, let's calculate what this box is equal to. Let's calculate the value of this box. Four times one is four. And you can use a calculator for this. What's four times negative 40? Yes, negative 160. And I have two negatives. This can be written like this. So my answer is 169. That is what the discriminant is. So on your paper, your discriminant is 169. So let's go back to our notes. If I have a positive discriminant, such as 169, that means I have two real solutions. So that's what you're gonna write. Our discriminant was a positive number, so that means I have two real solutions. Okay, is there another problem on your paper that you would like me to do? Number six, okay, let's do number six. Okay, number six. Is this in standard form? Nope, it has to be ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay, so I'm gonna move this to that side. So it will become a negative nine X squared. This can stay the same, plus eight X. Okay, now it is in standard form. So that means my A, this is A and this is B. I don't have a C value. So my A value is negative nine, B is eight, I don't have a C value, so that's just zero. Mm -hmm. All right, so B squared minus 4AC. Let's go ahead and substitute. The B value, we just said it was 8. The A value and the C value, let's replace it. A is negative 9, C is 0. So what's eight squared? Good, 64 minus, let's see what this box is equal to, zero. And 64 minus zero is 64. So that means my discriminant is 64. That's a positive number. So looking at our notes, if our discriminant is positive, if we have a positive discriminant, we have two real solutions. So your graph is gonna look something like this where it crosses the x-axis twice. So I have two real solutions. Okay, one of the quiz questions that I can go over 
These were some of the easy ones, something like this. You just had to move this over so that it's x squared equals 81. And then you do the square root of both sides. What's the square root of 81? 9 also. Negative 9 as well. So that's the answer. You can write it like this, or you can do plus or minus the same thing. Okay, another one. Let's say we didn't have a perfect square like this. You should have moved this over so that it's x squared equals 60. Now, we don't know what the square root of 60 is, so we're going to have to break it down. I can do 6 times 10, 2 times 3, 2 times 5. Now it's broken down. So x will be equal to the square root of 2 times 3 times 2 times 5. Here are a pair of 2s. Cross it out. One of them will go outside. So your answer is 2 square root of 5, and you need a plus or minus. Okay, another problem. Okay, thank you for catching that. Three, uh-oh. You multiply the inside. Where is it? Okay, here we go. The inside is three and five, so that's 15. You multiply the inside and you multiply the outside. Okay, another problem. Okay, um, let's do one with the number on the outside. So five parentheses. Okay, this is one of them. First, I saw a lot of people make this mistake. They tried to distribute this. You can't distribute if there's a squared right here. Okay, you should not be discri discri distributing the five. Can't talk today. Okay, so what you should have done first is divide by 5 to get rid of it. So now we have this. Okay, now we're going to get rid of this little squared. To do that, we're going to get rid of, we're going to do the square root to get rid of it. So now I have x minus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 7. Now, add 6 to both sides. That's your answer. Yep, square root of 7. We couldn't simplify. This is just 1 and 7. So it just stays the same. <laughs> okay, another one. I'm going to flip. Oh, here's another one that a lot of people. Actually, let me work on the back of the quiz. We have some harder questions on the back. So another example. Can I use your paper? Okay. Let's do this one. Negative 2 x minus 9 squared equals negative 288. Again, I saw a lot of people try to distribute. That is incorrect. What you should have done was divide by negative 2. Negative 288 divided by negative 2 is 144. Now do the square root of both sides. So we'll get, what's the square root of 144? 12, but plus or minus 12. And then you add 9, both sides. So we're going to get two answers. 12 plus 9 is 21. 
negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. So those are your answers. Yes. So let me do one where there was an I. I'll do number eight. So number eight is x squared plus 72 equals zero. We should have moved this to the other side so that it's x squared equals negative 72. Now we can take the square root. So the square root of 72, I can do seven, I'm sorry, eight times nine is 72. We can break down this eight, four times two is eight. I can break this down, I can break down the nine. So underneath the square root, I'll have two, 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 three, three. Two times two times two times three times three. Here's a pair, cross it out, one goes outside. Here's another pair, cross it out, a three goes outside. So multiply the outside. Two times three is six. The inside, you're left with the number two. Now, notice our problem has a negative under the square root symbol. That means you'll need an I. So your answer is x equals 6i square root of 2. And don't forget, plus or minus. Any other questions on this quiz? OK. I'll do one more. Let's say I have 3x squared minus 243 equals 0. Well, first, move this to this side so that we have 3x squared equals 243. Now I'm going to divide by 3. And what's 243 divided by 3? I believe it's 81. Then you take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to mm -hmm. 9 and negative 9. More questions on this quiz that you got back? No requests? Number 10. Okay, so first you were supposed to divide by four. <laughs> and can you put that in the calculator and let me know what that is? Thank you. 121. And it should be negative, right? Okay, and then we'll take the square root of both sides. Okay, so we have x minus 5 equals, let's break down the square root. Well, what's the square root of 121? It's 11. And because you have a negative underneath, you need an i. And it's plus or minus. All right, now we're going to add 5 to both sides. And that's your answer. Any more questions? Okay. 